So again, S equals theta times the radius. The radius is 12, and the arc length this time is 26. What you don't know is theta. So I just divide both sides by 12, and I get theta equals 26 over 12, which reduces to 13 over 6. And then that's already in radians, so you don't have to do anything with it. That's your answer. So that one is just like the one we did Yesterday, at the end of yesterday. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, this one is 11, so the, what, this is Vanessa, right? Find the radiant measure of the central angle. So four is the representation of the arc length, so that's my S. Three is the representation of the radius, so what I'm missing is theta. So S equals theta times the radius, S is four. Theta is what I don't know, the radius is three, divide both sides by three, and I get theta is four thirds. If it wanted it in degrees, then you'd multiply it times 180 over pi. Okay, this is three and then that four B. So three says determine the quadrant in which the angle lies. Okay, so these are in radians, but without pi. So these are the ones that are a little bit trickier. Remember all the way around your circle would be, it would go from zero and then it would go two pi. And that two pi without pi would be two times 3.14. So it's also 6.28. This side would be 3.14. So I, I said it not yesterday, but the day before, that for me, I kind of just like eyeball that a little bit less than that 3.14 would be three. So I kind of do this and I would say, okay, this would be three and a little bit less than that 6.28, that would be six. And then I kind of divide the remaining angle here, this part into two smaller parts. So I would do it like this and then like this. And that would be one radian, two radians, and this would be four, and this would be five. That kind of just gives you a range. It doesn't have to be perfect, but something like that. So when you see negative one, you're going the other direction to negative one, which is here, would fall right here. So I know that's in the fourth quadrant. Now eight, think about what's happening. If I took away the 6.28, even if you just took away six, you know it's two-ish, right? So I'd go, this would be 6.28, this would be 7.28, this would be 8.28, which means that 8 is a little bit less than that, which would be in that second quadrant. Yeah, I mean, you want to know a roundabout. Like, I know halfway is 3.14. No, I forgot to, like, go, like, negative to the one. Oh, okay. It's pretty close, but it's definitely closer. Like, I know that that is, yeah. I know that the eight would be a little bit past it, but it's pretty close. Like, I probably wouldn't do something that close if it was a test question, just because that's kind of tricky, because it's pretty close. Okay, so then this one, negative three. So now you're going the other way, right? So you know it's this way, because this here would be negative 3.14, and it's just shy of that. Everybody else is good? Good from home? No questions on the homework? We're, like I said, we're going to start 6-3 today, which is trig functions of any angle. So now we're kind of combining what we did this last section, which is the, tr the radian stuff, with what we did last chapter with the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. So this is a big, in my opinion, unit circle is a big deal. Okay, usually in like pre-calc, I teach it and I actually quiz them on it because I want them to know it so well that I give them a blank unit circle and they fill it in. Okay, because there are so many things that are drawn from the unit circle. Then what happens is they like, I literally quiz them on it and then they know it so well that I can ask them a question months later based on the unit circle that they can reference it pretty quick and it will continue to help you in calc and in AP, whatever you do after this besides cats probably. Now this year, obviously it's different because they all have the unit circle, so I didn't quiz them on it. But it is still just as important. This is like Miss uh, Ferrier and I, like she's a right triangle person, her brain works, and I'm a unit circle person. So we try to find the middle ground in between because we both think the other one is so important. So we taught you all the sine, cosine, tangent stuff involving our 30, 60, 90, our 45, 90 triangles. But if I were to take those triangles and actually put them in a circle and I make the radius one, you get these coordinate points as you move around your unit circle. 
So notice that all of the over sixes have the same coordinate point. The sign changes, but they're all the same values. It's root three over two and one half. All the sixes, all, all the over sixes, all the way around your unit circle. So for me, that's important because you wanna be able to reference that kind of quickly, just knowing that coordinate point. And I'll explain why in a minute. All the over fours are root two over two and root two over two. Again, positive and negative sign changes as you move around your circle. Oh, that one got yucky. But they are all the same coordinates. Oh, so let me erase this positive and negative because we'll talk about that later. And then all of the over threes are also the same. And that's the reverse of the over sixes. So think about how this overlaps with what we already know. If I were to take pi over six and convert it into degrees, so I'd multiply it times 180 over pi, the pi's would cancel, six would go into 80 30 times. So six pi over six is the same thing as 30 degrees. Pi over three is the same thing as 60 degrees, and pi over four is the same thing as 45 degrees. Hopefully those angle measurements sound familiar because those are our special right triangles. So if I had a 30, 60, 90 triangle with a radius of one, opposite the 30 would be one, opposite the 60 would be root three, and opposite the 90 would be two. So if I asked you for the sine of 30 degrees, you would tell me it's what? Based on this little right triangle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So what's the sine of 30 degrees? A half. If I asked you for the cosine of 30 degrees, you'd tell me it's what? Root three over two. How about the tangent? at 30 degrees. Okay, so that was all based on our triangle, right? We remember this? Yeah. Now, look at my unit circle. The coordinate point at pi over six, which is the same as 30 degrees, the x is root three over two, the y is one half. So the rule on the coordinate points is this. The sine is the y, the cosine is the x. The tangent is the y over the x. So... Is that like the r and... Yes. Okay. So now we're going to look... I'm going to ask... I'm going to obviously continue with this. But instead of trying to draw a right triangle, I'm going to ask you to answer these questions based on this circle. I promise it will be easy. Um, okay. okay, ready? So let me, let's look at the circle. I'm gonna raise all this off so that it's not color, co covered in colors anymore. Come on. I'm frozen. There we go. Unlock. Oh, hang on. Sorry. Let me group it. Okay. I would recommend you doing the same thing. I'm going to screenshot this circle because I'm going to bring it in in just a moment. But before I move on, okay, pick an angle in the first quadrant that you see like 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. That's not pi over, let's, well, we just did pi over 6. So don't pick pi over 6. Pick one, another one. Pi over, pi over 3. Okay, so if I ask for the sine of pi over 3, I'm going to look at my coordinate point at pi over 3, which is 1 half and root 3 over 2. And what part of that coordinate is my sine? The x or the y? The y. So what's the y at pi over 3? 
root three over two. If I ask for the cosine at pi over three, what part of it am I looking at? The x, what's the x at pi over three? One half. If I want the tangent at pi over three, I have to do the y over the x. So it's gonna be root three over two over one half. And then we keep change, flip it. And I get root three. highlighted in your little circle depending on the angle and if it's sine cosine or tangent and then you like look at it and you use the coordinate points given with it and plug it into y x y over x yes unless it's like this and then we just flip it for the reciprocal yeah. function right so if i wanted oh. cosecant i would just take that and flip it so then it, oh okay this makes so much okay I, okay vanessa she is not agreeing with you. What? <laughs> let's go to it. Let's go to an angle in the second quadrant. Pick an angle in there. Um, like five, pi over six. five pi over six. Okay, this is the coordinate point that matches it, right? Mm -hmm. It's an over six. Remember, every over six has root three over two and one half. But it's in the second quadrant, right? And all students take calculus, which means that the sine is positive which means my y is positive, but my x is negative. And think about it, it's a coordinate point. So we moved left and up to get in the second quadrant. So the x is negative, the y is positive, right? So this is my coordinate point. So if I ask you for the sine of five pi over six, what part of that coordinate are you grabbing? What did you say? The half. Oh, I thought you said the x, the half, yes, because it's the y. Sophia looked at me like, I think you're wrong. <laughs> so if I asked for the cosine of 5 pi over 6, your answer would be what? Negative, Negative root 3 over 2. And I asked for the tangent of 5 pi over 6, I would do y, which is 1 half, over x, negative root 3 over 2. Keep, change, flip. And I get negative 1 over root 3, which becomes root 3 over 3 negative root 3 over 3. So what about the bottom? What about the bottom? Like, what do you mean the bottom? Oh, 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 oh. I keep change flipped it. Is that what you mean? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm looking, what do you say keep the top? Uh, so you keep the 1 half, you change it from division to multiplication, and you flip the negative root 3 over 2. So at some point, it's not going to be on this circle anymore. Oh. Yeah. So in a, normal in a normal typical year in which you don't have a reference sheet, I would probably have asked you a question based on the unit circle. And you'd know it because you know the unit circle. But since you have the reference sheet, none of the angles on your quiz or test are actually going to be these angles. They're going to be coterminals. So we're building our way to that. Okay. So then how do you know that top? Like, like I know that sign is positive. Yeah. Because I took the y, which was positive, and divided it by the x, which is negative. But how did you know, like, the x and the y? Like, how did you know what the sign was on the x and the y? Based on where that angle is located. So that angle is located in the second quadrant, and in the second quadrant, the x is negative, but the y is positive. How did you know? So that's, like, just a rule. Because you're moving left and up, right? So the x left means oh. it's going negative. Does that make sense? Okay, that and then up is positive. Okay. So you can either establish that for your coordinate points or you can use the reference angle, which is these three angles every single, well, not every single time because there's over twos, almost every single time, and then apply the sign after knowing where which the quadrant is. So you could say every over six has a sign that's a half and a cosine that's root three over two. And then you could say, where does this specific over six lie? If it lies in the fourth quadrant, then I know my cosine is positive and my sine is negative. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna build into the coterminals. We're not there yet, we're gonna build into them. Mm -hmm. So knowing where it lies is what we did yesterday, right? We said, where does this angle? And that's why we kept saying it. What quadrant is this angle in? Right. 
because that determines the positive or negative sign. Okay. The reference angle, which is either going to be a whole number, which is going to put it on the x-axis, it's going to be an over 6, an over 4, or an over 3, or an over 2, which puts it on the y-axis. Oh. It has to be one of those in order to do it without a calculator. Okay. With a calculator, we're going to get to that later. But to do it without a calculator, it has to be one of those things. Okay. A whole number, an over 2, or an over 6, over 4, over 3. All right. Mm -hmm. One it, of the reciprocal functions, right? Let's mean, yeah. Given it in radians. Right. These are in radians. All of these are in radians. And we're going to be given it in radians, not in degrees, right? Well, it could be given to you in degrees because I could have done the same thing if I said 30 degrees instead of pi over 6. Those are okay, the same. So the fact that it's given to us in radians, it doesn't, it doesn't matter which one it's given to us. No, I just can't say over 6. If it's degrees, because degrees, it's different. Like, it's not an always over 6. It's not an always over 4. Does that make sense? Yeah. It would be 30. It would be 150. It would be 210. Or it would be 330. All of those are the same because they all have a reference angle that's 30 degrees. And then... Oh. Yeah? Okay. two questions. You have to pick the better one and only ask that one. Okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Pi over 3 is root 3. Okay. Where did it go? Where was that one? Yeah, down here. And then the other question is, like, why does it go? Because, like, I have the, the, this thing here. The x-axis? Yeah. 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 It's root 2. Pi, like, pi over 2. That, no, that's the vertical. Oh. This one and this one. Okay. But, like, why does it go from, like, 6? Oh, so the, the rule, I mean, it's literally, it's all the ones, that, you remember reference angles of 30 degrees? They were all the ones that were closest to my x-axis. Oh, okay. Because they're the closest to the x-axis. So this would have a reference, this is 30, right? This would be 180 minus 50, that's 30. This would be 30, 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 this would be 180 minus 50, that's 30. This would be 30 plus 180, that's 30. I mean, that's 210. And this would be 100, 360 minus 30, that's 330. So all four of those have 30 degrees as their reference angle, which means they have pi over 6 as their reference angle. So the ones closest to the x-axis are always the same. Those are all over 6s. Then the ones closest to the y-axis all have 60 degrees as their reference angle. They're 60 away from the x-axis. And those are all over 3s. And then the one in the middle is the over 4 because that's 45 degrees. It's halfway. So closest to the x is the 6s. Closest to the y's are the 3s. In the middle is the 4s. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Normally I teach you how to build this from scratch, totally blank unit circle, and I would teach you that. But you don't need it this year, because you um, have it. Yeah. I'm going to say something that might not make sense. It might be completely wrong. I love I get a disclaimer before you understand. But I'm going to say it because I think, because this is what my business is going to, is making sense to me. Okay, I hope it's right. If this is my circle. Yeah. And you know how we normally fold it this way? Yeah. If I take it and I fold it like on an angle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like from quadrant two to quadrant four, rather than from quadrant one to quadrant four. Sure. Whatever's negative becomes positive, or yes. positive becomes negative. Yes. So to remember it, if you just fold it diagonally, you're just gonna get the sure. opposites of whatever you have, right? Sure, yeah, yeah. That's just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know if that was gonna make sense. It does, not, but yeah. The pictures, yeah. Okay, we haven't done an over 4, so we're going to do that one next. Okay, so let's pick the over 4 in the 4th quadrant, which is 5 pi over 4. If I asked you for the sine at 5 pi over 4, you would tell me it's what? The y, which is? Negative root 2 over 2. If I asked for the cosine at 5 pi over 4, you'd tell me it's what? Same thing, negative root 2 over 2. And then the tangent... Y over X, right? Negative root 2 over 2 over negative root 2 over 2 is what? 1. <laughs> so I'm going to take this a step further, okay? This little coordinate point. Oh, I wish I could erase it, and I can't. I can't erase my own 
mess, can I? Nope. Okay, I'm going to rewrite it. And I'm going to encourage you to do the same. So pi over 6. Pi over 4. Pi over 3. Root 3 over 2, 1 half. This you already have, unless you didn't write it. And then I would strongly recommend that you write this down because it's going to make your life easier from here on out. 1 half. Root 3 over 2. And I'm going to say this is my cosine. And I'm going to say this is my sine. Because the x is the cosine, the y is the sine. And then wait, because I'm going to do one more step. We're going to do tangents. So if you want to have a chart, I would love for you to memorize this because this will make life easier moving forward when you don't get notes. But if you want to, if you want to write it down for now, that's fine. If I did the y over the x, because it's the same thing every time, right? So if I did the y over the x on the pi over 6, I get root 3 over 3. If I do the y over the x on the over 4, I get 1. And if I do the y over the x on the pi over 3, I get root 3. Now what helps me remember this is that 6, in order to get a sum of 6, how many 3's do you have to have? 2, and there's two 3's in that tangent. In order to get a 3, how many 3's do you have to have? 1, and there's only one 3 in that. So that's for me how I memorize it, okay? But this, in my opinion, is probably one of the most helpful things that you can remember from the unit circle, okay? And again, I wouldn't want to have to reference that every time. It's super important. This is one of those things that you want, like in your brain, you will use sine, cosine. Like I just subbed Ms. Farrier's AP calc last week, and somebody's like, what's the sine at pi over 3? And I was like, I know this answer. I don't know anything else that they talk about in that class, but I knew that answer because it's unit circle based. Okay? Can you do it? Mm -hmm. On the box that I just, yeah. So that combined with your all students take calculus will get you every single answer. You just have to know where the angle lies, okay? But they're not gonna be that answer. They're not gonna be those questions, they're gonna be coterminals. So you might see something like uh, 13 pi over six. So you're gonna figure out where it lies. That determines your positive and negatives. And then you're gonna use those points. Oh, wow. But we shouldn't know the answer to that right now. No, I mean, we're gonna do it next. Okay. I'm gonna show you how to do it, but yeah. I'm going to show you how to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, I don't know that yet. Is that a problem? <laughs> All right, we ready? How come I... It froze. Okay, so we're going to start with some that are on the unit circle and then some that are not. And none of... I'm going to tell you right now, all of these questions are on my unit circle, except for the negative one. None of these are going to be on your quiz. That's a bad thing. The unit circle ones are easy. Okay, they're not going to be on your quiz because the coterminals are going to be on your quiz. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, the, like this plus two pi or this minus two pi? Oh, okay. The stuff that we the stuff that we drew out yesterday. The, yeah, yeah. All of those. Okay, so I'm going to pull in my unit circle, but I want you to try to think about how do I start to do this without relying upon this guy because you want to be faster than this. Okay, so. First one says sine of 3 pi over 2. So look at your unit circle. Find 3 pi over 2. Where is it? Uh, it's at the bottom of where 270 is. What's the coordinate point there? Zero negative, Zero, negative 1. What's the sine of that? Negative, negative 1. What? Then it's... <laughs> We'll stop giggling like a five-year-old and pay attention and you'll figure it out. Are you still watching Sophia take a tumble or there's something funnier now? Yep, three over two is here. Oh. The coordinate point there is zero, negative one. And the sign's the y, so negative one. Use those two. Uh-huh, okay. yeah. It's just that not all, I mean, all of them are some combinations of zeros and ones. It's just that they're positive and negative and they move around. So you can't memorize those like you do the other ones. All right, so same angle, but now the cosine. So what's the cosine at that same angle? Zero. What's the tangent at that angle? What happens when I put y over x there? What's the y? Negative one. What's the x? Zero, so this is undefined.
for me, I'm a unit circle person. Like I took pre-calc, I mean, I took, I took algebra two honors in high school and I didn't know what the heck my teacher was saying. It was the worst math class I ever took. I hated it. And then I took pre-calc and they showed the unit circle and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. You're gonna show this to me now? I could have done so much better last year because my brain likes that circle and the memorization part of it. But there are two completely different styles of doing it and not one's right over the other. So I, like the great thing is what, our goal is to expose you to both and you get to choose, okay? All right, so cosine of seven pi over four. Seven pi over four is on my unit circle, find it. Where is it? It's here. So I'm using, I know it's in over four, so I already know that coordinate point. So before I even find it on my unit circle, I know that the coordinate point here is root two over two and root two over two. And I know that because it's in over four. Now the locating it on my circle is important because that tells me the positive and negative signs here. So in, on that unit circle in the fourth quadrant, the X is positive and the Y is negative. As long as it's simplified. Like if it was 8 over 4, it's not because that ends up being 2 pi. Okay. But if it's simplified, then yes. What's 5 over 4? 5 over 4, it has that coordinate point. And that's in the third quadrant. Oh, okay. Yep. 35 over 4 has that same coordinate point. Oh. It's just in the, what was that? 35 over 4 would be 8, right? And 3 fourths. So that's in the second quadrant. That's what I'm going to teach you how to do. We're going to get there. Okay. All right. Sine of 7 pi over, no, sorry, cosine of 7 pi over 4 is what? Root 2 over 2. Sine of 7 pi over 4 is what? Negative root 2 over 2. It's not on here, but what would the tangent of 7 pi over 4 be? One. Negative 1. Careful, right? Because one's positive, one's negative. Okay. All right, now we go, I'm going to go to 7 and 8, and then I'm going to go back to 6. 7, 2 pi over 3. What's my coordinate point at a pi over 3? One half and root three over two. Where is two pi over three? Quadrant two. So what are the positive negative signs on that one half and root three over two? Negative and positive. So what's the cosine at pi over three? Negative a half. Eight, four pi over three. What's the coordinate point there? One half and root three over two. I look at that four pi over three would be where on my circle? Quadrant three. So the signs would be negative and negative. What's the cosine? Negative one half. so smart that's the end of the notes today so we inverse it right you're gonna have two answers like we did in the last chapter remember oh. we had to figure out what quadrant what we had to do the value gives me the reference angle and then we figure out which it is based on that reference angle so it's the same except that it's all unit circle based okay so then tangent of negative five pi over three this is the first one that's not on my unit circle right because it's negative so if it's in over three we should already know this coordinate point which is what a half, root three over two, what would the, what would the tangent be there? So you remember if it's an over three, how many threes do you need? One, so this is root three. So I already have that. That's already like half the battle, right? Now I just gotta figure out the positive negative sign. Right? So there's two ways to do the negatives. One is, look at where it's positive. Five pi over three is positive here. Right, it was five pi over three. I zoomed out, yeah. Five pi over three is here. Fold it along my x-axis and where it overlaps, which is the top up here, is the negative version of that angle. Or we convert this into a mixed number, negative one and two thirds pi. And after we talked about this yesterday, hopefully this is a little bit fresh. Negative one would be here. Two thirds is bigger than a half, right? 
So it goes in to the next quadrant, and I know it's now in quadrant one. So the negative one goes this way, right? That's negative one. But isn't it in quadrant four the first thing? That's positive five pi over three. We're doing negative. We're doing the fold in half. Yep. So you could do the fold in half or you could do this way. Okay. Yep. So the fold in half was find the five pi over three, fold it in half, and it's at the top, right? The other thing is work your way this way. So negative one is here. This would be negative a half. It's bigger than that, which means it goes into the next quadrant. And now I know it's quadrant one. So in quadrant one, is my tangent positive or negative? Positive. So root three is my answer. And that folding thing always works? Yep. You still breathing? Yeah. Actually, let me do, I'll do a, a, an example where it's coterminal because we need to start doing those anyways. All right. And then we'll move into the calculator part tomorrow. Pardon the interruption at this time. Members of the track D major release of class. Oh, right on cue. Do you, you want to watch this one and then you can go? Yeah. Okay. So 11 pi over 3, right? So yesterday we talked about how to graph them, right? Before I even get to that point, I want to look at this angle. I want to say, is it simplified? Can I simplify? Not like converted, but can I simplify 11 over 3? No. no. So it is simplified, and it's an over 3. So what's my coordinate point? A half, root 3 over 2, which means the cosine value I know is what? A half. I don't know if it's positive or negative yet, right? But I at least know that part of it. Yeah. Yes? Oh, okay. Yeah? Okay. Now I gotta figure out where 11 pi over three lies. So 11 over three, remember there's two ways to do this. Subtract two pi from it, make it coterminal. So subtract two pi until you make it on the unit circle. So I could do 11 pi over three minus two pi, which is six pi over three, and I get five pi over three. That's on my unit circle. Or I convert 11 over three to three and two-thirds pi. You with me? And it's an odd whole number, which means I would have gone one, two, three. That's three here. Two-thirds is bigger than a half, so I know I'm in my fourth quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, is the cosine positive or negative? positive, so it's a positive one-half. Can you also make it into a degree? Sure. It's just going to take you a lot longer. Where did you get the 11 pi over 3? I made it up. I said, let me give you a coterminal example since there wasn't one yet, and that's what's going to be on your quiz. So, um, you could either do... <laughs> you're welcome. 11 pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3. 2 pi, which becomes 6 pi over 3. 2 pi. Right. Until it comes on your unit circle. Which is fine. not that bad right now, but like what if I did 35 pi over 3? So you do the 6 pi. I'm going to do the 6 so I can remember that it's 2. Right? 6. So 11 minus the 6 gives you the 5. Right. So but it's still over 3. It's still over 3. over the 3. Yep. We're going to... Okay. Yep. So let's say it's sine of 35 pi over 3. Do you know that because it's sine, it's going to be the root 3 over 2. Good. So you know the value. So you don't know if Bye, ladies. Good luck. Stay on your feet. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> you can do, well, you can either simplify it Kay. to a mixed number or you can do a minus 2. Right, so this time you'd have to minus 6 pi over 3, minus 6 pi over 3, minus so 6 pi over 3 until. Easier to just do mixed the bigger it is, the easier it's going to be to do the mixed number. So what is the mixed number of 35 over 3? 11. 11 and 2 thirds. So 11 means, where do I start, right or left? 11. No matter how many times I went around, I'm here, right, because it's odd. 2 yeah. thirds. I'm back in that fourth quadrant. 
negative. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay, so where we're at on the homework, let me tell you, because it's a weird spot, I think. Um, I would definitely start it tonight so it doesn't feel like a lot tomorrow. And then we're going to finish the notes tomorrow. Where did my website go? Because tomorrow we'll do the calculator part in radians. So everything we did in degrees last chapter we're going to do in radians in the calculator. So I would hold off on the calculator questions because you have to change your mode and all that good stuff. That's where we'll pick up um, with the notes. And then let me save you. Homework you can do. Uh, well, one and two are the um, X and Y coordinates like we did from the last chapter. Same thing. A lot of them are. When you get to eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, those are the ones. I mean, you could even go into the degree ones too because there's degree ones in 13 and 14. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. All of those you can do. So what did I start with? Yeah, eight through 19 you could do based on what we talked about. A couple of them are in degrees, but I think you can figure it out with your unit circle. And then the rest of them we'll talk about tomorrow. Bye, folks. Bye, thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day.